copyright proprietor has licensed the film contained in this video cassette for private home use only. Any other use, including making copies of the film, causing it to be seen or heard in public, or broadcasting it, or causing it to be transmitted to subscribers to a diffusion service, or selling, letting or hire, exchanging or otherwise dealing with it in part, is strictly prohibited without prior written permission of Hakushin Audiovisual Limited. Africa, land of great beauty. Africa is also a land of great brutality, a continent of desperation. Here in Africa, all this, beautiful and brutal, uniquely African, all this is disappearing. Here, the ancient things and the ancient ways as well are giving way to all that is new and modern. And very soon now, the old Africa will exist only in the memories of men and in their history books. And all this will be seen no more. In the film you are about to see, old Africa will remain alive. And the battle between the old and the new, the battle of blood, the battle to the death, that will remain alive also. The old is losing the battle of Africa, but not without a fight. And that conflict has made the African soil red with the blood of Africans. But everywhere, fighting and dying, the old gives way. The old loses. The old disappears. The old is swallowed whole. In the film you are about to see, the agonies of its death will live on this screen, even as they are living now in vanishing Africa. But nothing in New York or London ever looked like this. No subway train could ever take anyone to this kind of suburb. And the people speak hundreds of different dialects. Their foods are infinitely varied, as varied as their thousand spices. Cloves, cinnamon, nutmeg, pepper, durian. And the sounds they make are varied too. The music, it is as typical of modern Africa as the buildings and the streets of Kampala, as the African delegations to the United Nations. It is the same kind of music you might hear in some jazz joint in the United States, and it is completely different. <laughs> Old and new, and they battle. Where once there was only a small village of thatched huts, soon there will be a city of glass-faced buildings. Where once there was only a narrow footpath, soon there will be a modern road of concrete and steel. And the new Africa rolls back the old. And the old gives way before the onslaught.
And if the old Africa looked only to itself, the new Africa looks outward. Where once there was only a beach to face the sea, now there is a harbor to face the world. And through the harbor come some of the new things required by the new Africa, the new things and the new ideas. Into buildings like this comes the idea of a parliament of African man, the idea of a meeting of African minds, the idea of presenting a new face to the world, a modern African face, and the idea of progress for Africans. This is a hospital in the middle of the continent. The hospitals here are modern. And so is the medicine. The only trouble with the medicine, there isn't enough of it. Or maybe there's too much disease. The same familiar disease. Polio, for instance, and some others not so familiar. Leprosy, encephalitis, pellagra. Cancer, too. The list is really endless. But the battle against disease has been joined. The fight is slow and bitter, but the new medicine is winning. The old disease vanishes only reluctantly, but vanish it does, and a good thing, too. But other things vanish also, and that is not so good. All this is vanishing, all this which man has lived with for a thousand, thousand years. The great beasts of the land, the beasts of might and muscle, to whom man always gave wide birth. They are disappearing, for man no longer gives them wide birth at all. Instead, he slaughters them for the marketplaces of the world. And these, these beasts that live by speed and a clever nose and fear, man always followed these for food, as did everything else in Africa. Now he follows them for money, the money the world is willing to pay. All these are disappearing. And what man leaves behind, what man cannot use, what becomes the waste products of the hunt, is used by others. A baby giraffe, too small, too weak, too slow to evade the hunters, now lies prey to a pack of hyenas who relentlessly follow the hunt, gathering for themselves what isn't used by the hunters. A mother can only watch. There are others who are disappearing also. The birds of the sky are not the least among them. Their feathers decorate hats and women's clothes. Or perhaps they are amusing to hunt for sport. And although they are often just amusing, they are disappearing like the rest of old Africa. Only these seem safe. Maybe because they look too much like us. And yet, if all the wildlife around them is gone, they too will follow. Old Africa is vanishing and man in Africa is in need. And sometimes, killing animals is the only way. Take the bark of the Anconcathera tree, pound it into shreds and pieces. Sharpen arrowheads of wood. Squeeze the juices from the shredded bark. Dip the arrowheads into the sap. Heat, and the sap has turned into a deadly poison. And man the hunter has turned into man the killer. For this is the only way many Africans can stay alive, by killing.
and selling what they have killed. For elsewhere in the world, there is a demand, a demand that Africans can supply, that Africans do supply, even if illegally. African law allows the hunting of enough game to satisfy food needs. Africans hunt for much more than that. They hunt for game to sell, game that is often their only source of money, game to satisfy a great demand, the demand for the head of the dangerous Cape Buffalo and for its gamey meat. The animals of Africa are slaughtered in a never-ending stream. And under the pressure of the demands of commerce, the animals of Africa are dying. There is demand for the flesh of the common wildebeest and for the coat of the exotic zebra. Nothing in all of Africa, whether it walks on two legs or four, whether large or small, is as sought after as these. And often enough, this. A live mother, a dying baby. But living like this is the only way many Africans can stay alive at all. So like people everywhere, Africans are doing what they must do to stay alive. Kill them, hack them apart, use what is usable and get rid of the rest. Whenever possible, something to sell. Here is an elephant foot umbrella stand under construction. And if there is a delicacy to be found along the way, even if raw, good, but money is the main thing. Money from elephants most of the time. Or from anything else that will bring it. Money to live. Money from sales. Sales to other parts of Africa. Antelope jerky drying in the sun to be sold to the middlemen and then all over the continent. Money from the horn of the rhinoceros. Grind it down to a fine powder. Collect it, take it to market, secretly. For from the marketplace, it must be smuggled out, sent illegally to the shores of India and China as a stimulant to sex. Money is the main thing. And at the marketplace, 800 elephant tusks means 400 slaughtered elephants. And even these must be smuggled out, for the ivory cannot legally leave Africa. It is one of her great natural resources and not to be wasted. But leave Africa it does, every day. For these covered dows are rarely inspected and the smugglers are rarely caught. The whole thing is a dirty business, big business. Africans staying alive by marketing the living resources of their land. and old, and they battle. And the new is slowly winning out. But is the new always better? African opinion is divided. But even here, in the outback, in the haven of animals, the new rolls in, and the old gives way. And the conflict goes on. <laughs> Sometimes, it is not all conflict. Sometimes, the new helps the old to survive. Here is a baby rhino headed for one of the world's zoos. For there are men here in the wilds who are determined to preserve, even if only in zoos and an occasional game preserve, as much of the wildlife of Africa as they can. So, catch it, though the truck is traveling at 60 miles an hour and the frantic mother runs desperately nearby.
the nervous eye of the mother who, fortunately, can do nothing. <laughs> Tranquilize it. And a bit of the old Africa will be preserved in one of the world's zoos. This is a gaboon viper, one of the world's more deadly snakes. It is about to be milked for its poison by Alan Tarleton, the most famous snake trapper in all of Africa. The process, forcing the snake to yield its venom, is over quickly. Here, 3,000 snakes a week are milked, which leaves no time for waste. This snake has an infected fang. It is removed, but will grow back within 30 days. Alan Tarleton is by now relatively immune to snake bite, but he must carry at all times a hypodermic syringe full of bee sting antitoxin. For the sting of a bee would now kill him almost immediately. The snake is returned carefully to the box. The others are still dangerous. Now, repeat the whole operation with another snake. A puff adder. Here, the new uses the old. For there is enough venom in that dish alone to kill 20,000 people enough to make antitoxin to save the same number of snake bite victims all over the world. So sometimes the new uses the old. The walking stick. Walks like an insect, looks like a stick. It is the largest insect in the world. Amazing and harmless. A python, amazing and not so harmless. Twenty-two feet long, well over 200 pounds, able to swallow a goat whole, with the power to crush a man to death. A python worth $3,000 to the zoos of the world. The new is sometimes amazed by the old, although the old is often bored by it all. Sometimes the new is amused by the old. This is the dung beetle. This slight creature follows the trail of the mighty elephant, using what the elephant doesn't. In old Africa, existence is often on any terms at all. Thank you.
elephant dung in a hole is a convenient place to lay eggs. Well, isn't it? Sometimes the new is amused by the old and sometimes impressed by it. But mostly, the new just moves in and the old holds on. This is a witch doctor. He is privy to the secrets of the old African universe. He is in on the secrets of the combinations of things. And in old Africa, the combinations are strong. Lizard's eye, leopard spleen, tongue of the Thompson gazelle, to be taken internally for virility and fertility and senility. In old Africa, everything, however simple, has a meaning. A root rubbed on women's breasts assures a successful birth. The witch doctor holds on, and the people hold on with him. For he is the strongest ally of all the old things and the old ways. The African outbackers all use the witch doctors to repair every grievance against nature and against man. A dissatisfied dwarf who wants to be tall. He visits a witch doctor who can write the proper signs in the sand. The albino is white. The dwarf has reasoned that writing in the sand has made the albino white. For three coppers, the witch doctor will write again. If the albino is white, why can't the dwarf be tall? But neither the witch doctor nor his craft is funny or a hoax. Here, one witch doctor removes a death hex put on by another. The man, who had been unable to move, will get up and walk away. No, the witch doctor's craft is not a hoax. And those who believe in the power of the hexes can't avoid their effect. This man was caught stealing. A witch doctor was called. The man believed in the power of the witch doctor. The witch doctor decreed that the man should never again use his arm in payment for his crime. And now, neither modern medicine nor surgery can help this man, for he believes. Push further away from the cities, away from the new Africa, and into the stronghold of the old. Here, cattle are prized above all else. Here, there are only thorn bushes to protect the cattle from the beasts of prey. But that is all the land offers, thorn bushes. And the people, called souks, who live here, must use every resource at their command. The world of the souks is mostly dry land, sky, and a little water, very little water. Women from the village move in a line toward the water. And others travel hundreds of miles for that bit of water. There is little water on this land, so the people must hunt for it. They must dig wells deep beneath the earth. This one is 70 feet deep. 70 feet to water, 70 feet, hand to hand, in rhythm, from men deep inside the well, all the way to the top. At the top, the women wait. All this for a bucket full of water. The housing here is simple, built from the supplies at hand, grasses, dried muds, the dung of cows. The land is sparse, and the people must use what they can. To dress the hair of women, the rendered fat of animals. The hairdressing lasts for a whole year.
for the men, something more elaborate. To establish wealth, to indicate rank, to enhance appearance. The ingredients are all gathered from the materials of the countryside. Rushes from the hillsides, clay mixed with ochre from the dried earth. The most privileged of men are always the most ornate. A chief of the people with a fine headdress and an ivory ball inserted through his lip. The souks, like people everywhere, are wonderful at making do with what they have. Celebrating the arrival of the guests with a dance by the unmarried girls of the village. Making plain that those guests who come with an open hand and with respect will receive the same in good measure. In Africa, there is a story that is told very often these days, especially in the villages away from the cities, who was traveling. One day, when he was very hungry and tired, he came to a village of another people and asked for something to eat and a place to rest. The people received the chief well and gave him what he asked. Good. The following morning, the chief rose and looked about and saw that all the things of the village were different from what he was accustomed to. The chief went out to the people and told them that he would stay with them and show them how to change their old ways to his new ones. Good. The people agreed. But a visitor who came to the village many years later found the people doing things in the same old way. For although he didn't realize it, it was the chief who had changed, not the people. The people have their ways, and they are unwilling to change them. And the people have their cattle. Cattle, the symbol of wealth. Cattle, the incarnation of the good life. Cattle, the measure of worth. But to me, I'm better. Ask a man here what he would like most to have. He will answer, more than likely, a cow, the blood of the cow, drawn from the neck each evening and mixed into our food, makes us good and strong. In the bowl, we take the blood, mixing in ashes and urine, milk. We know that to some it's strange, but to us it tastes good and is moral. A hard people on a spare land, a land where nothing comes very easily. But they have their cattle and their ways, and they manage. They have their lives, and they live them. The new Africa has a better life to offer them, but most are not interested. And the rest? The rest remember the story of the chief who changed. The chief who had given in to the old ways without even realizing what he had done. And so, further into the interior. Further away from the cities. Even this far in, there is evidence of the new Africa. Evidence of the new medicine. The European doctor. But there is something else here, another kind of medicine. There is the medicine of the witch doctor. There is the medicine of these old instruments. Files, hacksaws pocket knives, and there is testimony as to what use was made of them. Skulls with holes in them. Skulls testifying to the oldest operation known to men, trepanation, the removal of large circular discs of bone from the skull. The usual method would be to make a linear incision from the occiput to the forehead. At this point, the trepanation proper would begin. Using an ordinary knife, the method would be to scrape as hard as possible standing astride the patient. Once the proper skull thickness has been reached, so that the skull could be dented in and out, rather like a table tennis ball, a specially sharpened but not sterile knife would then be inserted at the thinnest point the medicine man could find, and a sliver of bone, half cut, half levered out. African medicine of the old school. Still practiced today, 
but only under the strictest secrecy. Practiced illegally, deep in the fastness of old Africa. Destination, a certain island off the beaten track. Method of travel, an old ferry boat. Reason for going, to see Kabweri, a witch doctor who knows where the illegal skull operations are performed and who knows who performs them. transportation becomes less modern. The canoes of the Waganians, the water people. People are born and die on these boats. The island of Kabweri, the witch doctor. Kabweri is the most famous of all the medicine men, the most famous of all the witch doctors of his part of Africa. People, every kind of people, travel thousands of miles by every kind of conveyance, including foot, to consult with Kabweri. He is well paid, highly respected, and famous, and thus is able to support a large family. In this part of Africa, the outback, a large family starts with wives. Kabweri has 49. He will not take a 50th, however. Current African opinion is divided on this point, whether Kabweri feels that 50 is a bad number or just doesn't want to be greedy. There is, however, no limit to the number of his children, of which he has more than 200. Because of this, and because of his wisdom, the esteem in which he is held by his people, Kabweri resembles in every way an Old Testament patriarch. He resembles one in other ways, too, in the ways of knowledge. For Kabweri has much knowledge. Knowledge of the new and knowledge of the old. Kabweri knows the old better, and he prefers the old ways. He protects them. He won't talk about them. Where are the old ways practiced? He doesn't know, he says. What are those ways? He shrugs. Where is the medicine man who performs the illegal skull operation? Kabweri smiles. And in that smile lies the best protection of the old tradition. But push on anyway and hope it's in the right direction. Push on, by any means possible, toward the Uturi forest and the Apulu river. Push on past the animals, white rhinos. Past the Ancoli, the cattle of the Watusi. They were once the cattle of the pharaohs, brought from Egypt long ago by the Watusi. further into old Africa. Upstream, and if in the right direction, toward an even more ancient and more hidden Africa. rare beasts once more, beasts almost never seen. The white rhinoceros, the Dutch who discovered them, called them wide. The English thought the Dutch had said white, and thus, although they are hardly even gray, black is more the truth, white rhinoceros. 
but they are wide. Wider by far than the ordinary rhino. Second largest of the beasts that live on land. Sometimes 15 feet long, weighing more than 4,000 pounds. Upstream and into the forest, the Ituri forest, the great rainforest of equatorial Africa. Furthest away from the new cities. Here are the homes of the oldest inhabitants of the continent, the Negrillos, pygmies, a warning is sent, the pygmy village is informed of the arrival of guests. Now through the Aturi. A place where nature has conspired to defeat man and has often succeeded. Deeper and deeper into old Africa and toward the home of the pygmies. Once the pygmies roamed the entire continent from the Sahara in the north to the Cape in the south. Now they have been driven by others, others who at times have made them slaves, driven them deep into the rainforests of an Africa that once was theirs alone. They remain here, a reminder of another older war between cultures, a war these people lost. They are like people everywhere, responsive to respect, and sensitive to condescension. The pygmies are fine hunters, skilled with the bow. Small, but patient, and able to bring down the mighty elephant, even if that means tracking him for days. are men, men who know about their own world as well as any man can, men who love the world they find themselves in, who imitate it, for it fills them with awe. They imitate it here in the monkey dance, an expression of their wonder at the world. Men who know about many things, who know about the old ways of curing sickness, who know about witch doctors who perform certain operations and might, perhaps, be willing to share that knowledge. They say the way is difficult, perhaps impossible. Help would be needed. The old men talk. <laughs> The people continue their dance. People in love with their life. Would they be willing to help? The small people. Could they help? They are the only help available.
the way is difficult. Through jungle to caves. Caves, the first objective. Through those caves to the river. The second, up the river, across the rapids, to the falls. And then, onward once more, if the falls can be passed. Onward to the goal, the country of the witch doctor. The trail lies through the depths of the earth. It is strange here, and dangerous. The black mamba, a snake whose bite can kill a full-grown man in 40 seconds, dangerous and very rare, applies to any of the world's zoos. The way to the cave is dangerous, but it is the only way to the river that lies beyond. pounds carted over the dark and difficult terrain. 2,000 pounds of the new Africa. A boat and its engine. Gasoline. Tools. Machinery. An intrusion of the outside world on the world of the pygmies. Perhaps the first intrusion. And yet, the hard work is done by the pygmies. The old way. This is a place where all work is done by muscle. No machines here, except those that are being carried. Move ahead. But the most determined muscles become tired, even if machines don't. And there must be time to rest, to relax. Something new is introduced to the pygmies, a new dance from the outside world. They try it. But for the pygmies, the new dance has no meaning. And the pygmies dance only with meaning. So when they dance, they prefer their own dances. And when they relax, they prefer their own ways. dance, honoring the life and death of the elephant, and honoring their own life in the forest. The pygmies are satisfied with that life. They are not disturbed that none of them has ever invented any machines. They are not sad because none of their people has become a great explorer. It does not bother them that among their numbers there are no great generals. Why? Because they are too interested in the essence of things, too involved with enjoying the simplicities of life. They don't know how to move mountains, but they know how to enjoy them.
dancing goes on. For Africans, dance and life are two words for the same thing. days to cover one half mile, daylight once more. And the witch doctor, the forbidden skull operation, is that much closer. The people of old Africa always protect their own. And here, even the forest has conspired to bar the way. The forest has always protected its own, keeping man's old ways safe. But now, even the forest gives way before the onslaught. Neither animal, nor plant, nor insect will thwart the determination of man to discover. The work continues, moving toward the river, the river that leads to the land of the witch doctor, the land of the skull operations. The river, the second objective. Now, further upstream, into the interior. Here, Africa is unafraid, because here, machines are yet unknown. And in this part of Africa, the unknown is not yet the source for fear. Here, once more, side by side with the common, is the strange. The okapi, one of the strangest of all animals. of zebra, body of antelope, neck of giraffe, ears of donkey, and tongue of anteater. It is obviously rarest of the animals of old Africa. It is also disappearing. Its coat is too prized in the markets of the world. The okapi, a vanishing part of the vanishing continent. There are waterfalls ahead, and no boat, no matter how modern, has been known to go up a waterfall. Knew that they could travel overland and reach the falls before the boat did. 
So once more, a modern machine waits to be moved by the power of the old-fashioned muscle, moved from the bottom of these falls to the top. The river at the top. The river leading to the witch doctor. The river along which anyone seeking him must travel. And the work begins. The work is done. The top is reached. The pygmies go only to the top and no further, for here, at the top of the falls, the land is forbidden. It is the territory of another people, and the pygmies will not stray into it. They move back down the falls, vanishing from sight, the way the new Africa will cause them to vanish, not for a day, but forever. And so, move ahead, alone. seven-foot monitor lizard. The monitor lizard is here where other animals hesitate. It seeks out the eggs of the crocodile, though they are buried deep in the sand along the river. Taking care to avoid the crocodile, who is ever-present, and always anxious about the eggs. The lizard ferrets them out and carries them away, cracks them and sucks out the fluid inside. Instinctively, the crocodile returns to guard her nest. The lizard will return again and again, as long as it can get away with it. Impassable, but push on, by foot. Here, even
even the land waits, hushed, for the secrets of its people, the secrets of the witch doctor of the skulls, to be exposed. <laughs> Long in advance, the drums beat out a warning message, the arrival of intruders. in the uplands, the land of the Kisi, the land of mystery, the land of the witch doctor, and a chance to see the operation of the skulls. The witch doctor, the medicine man, in old Africa, he is the man who knows everything. There is a crisis here, and the witch doctor must act. And so, he prepares. He is careful, readying his instruments, testing the sharpness of the blades. Ready, he gathers his instruments, and more important, the chant that appeals to the spirit and the mystery of things begins. For in old Africa, without the chant, the witch doctor's spell. All night long, the preparations continue. The preparations of the body, of the mind, and of the soul. If the laying of a palm frond bed is important, and if the washing of the body is necessary, then the chanting of the proper words is crucial. This is the thing the witch doctor knows. And so, the chant continues, a chant to the spirits to ward off evil and ensure success. This is seen under the most extreme conditions. The time is at hand. The preparations are nearing completion. Now, old Africa and the witch doctor pit their wisdom and their skill against the frailty of the human body. Green hairy leaves are used as swabs. These leaves are poisonous if taken internally, but considered to have great healing power. The operation is about to begin. universe holds its breath at the audacity of man. No anesthesia here, no hypnosis, only the psychosomatic belief and faith in one man, the witch doctor. Opening of the cranial cavity is the most delicate of operations. Modern surgical requirements are one sterile nurse, one instrument nurse, Two circulating nurses, not sterile. One anesthesiologist, the chief surgeon, his personal assistant, a resident neurosurgeon, the interning physician attached to his staff. Operating facilities, the low minimal requirements. Surgical lamps, sufficient power to operate. One tank medical oxygen, blood of the proper type and factor, 500 units. Opening time, approximately three hours, depending, of course, on lack of complication. Surgery varies. Closing time, two hours or more. 
con comare. After three and a half hours, the patient is tired. She is given something to drink, some water. The witch doctor and his assistants take time out to wet their mouths. With beer, they are as casual as their patient, all evidently sharing the same complete confidence in the skill of the witch doctor. The surgical team enjoys the beer. The patient is given some gruel, called Uji. Obediently, the patient resumes her position for the continuation of surgery. Skull surgery. Trepanation in the outback. No oxygen, no surgical lights, no scrub nurses, no anesthesiologists, no neurosurgeons. Not even sanitary, sterile conditions. And yet, the chances of survival? 96%. Better than in a London hospital. So say the old Africans. Europe, America, New Africa. They all know much, but understand little. South wise. The patient's head is washed clean with the old scrub water. Warthog fat is used as a dressing. What condition is the operation directed against? Anything from cancer of the brain to simple headache. Strips of banana leaves are used to bind the wound shut. No stitches here. And after seven and one half hours, with a large hole in her skull, there for the rest of her life, the patient walks away. Such is the medicine of old Africa. After the ordeal, because the spell of the doctor's words has succeeded, there is a time for games and celebration. And it is a time for the doctor. Time for him to show the results of his skill. Other trepanations, others with permanent holes in their skulls. Holes covered so thinly by scalp that each person must wear a head garment to protect his brain from the sun. There are such examples of the doctor's skill. One person has had 13 such operations, a hero of his people. It is an honor for a people to have a great and successful witch doctor among them. A witch doctor's power over his people and their blind faith are all a part of life and death in the old Africa. The rest of the village just celebrates, and the life of old Africa goes on, as yet undisturbed here. In old Africa, there is understanding and beauty. But there are other things, things even less spoken of than the witch doctor's operation, things less known, things harder to find, things never seen. Sex rites, a ritual understood by men everywhere but practiced only here, wild orgies of mind and body. A 
giant spider, big as a man's hand. A web 30 feet wide, strong enough to stop a flying bird. This spider will wait very patient for many weeks until the bird has died and thoroughly decayed. The old African ways will also wait for the new to decay. Sometimes, just sometimes, even now, there is something here, something never spoken of and almost unknown, something impossible to find, except perhaps this time it has been found. something strange. It is something these people, the Topoki, know about. Old ways, ancient preparations, sacred, secret, and terrifying. human beings do to honor the old ways. Rites as old as man himself. Something that has to do with fertility, with sex. virgin, the chosen one, is brought into the circle. Something done under the influence of bank. Virgins dance in sensual preparation for their marriage. The chosen one is prepared for the final ritual. And the heat of the dancing, the fever of the bangi, the strange drug, increases the frenzy. Come on, 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 come on,
Before anything can be sacrificed, the Topoki purge all evil spirits from the body. Something is happening here. Something we will never really understand or be sure about. It all seems to be a dream. A part of the dream of vanishing Africa. offers one of its own to the world of spirit. And in each dancer, the flesh is consumed, as if each is burning in that fire. reaches a breaking point. This is the old Africa. Now, slowly, it is vanishing. And so, Wahiri, farewell to these people, still members of a tribe. For soon they will be African citizens of a nation and of the world. And these ancient rights will be no more, swallowed by the new Africa that is coming. Wahiri, to the pain and brutality. Farewell to the beauty of vanishing Africa. Thank you.